Reverend Polycarp Zango, a pastor with the Christ, uh, Church of Christ of a Nations, COCIN in Joss, Plateau State, has been released from the captivity of Boko Haram. Zango was kidnapped by the insurgents on the 19th of October while on a journey to a minister's conference in Gombe. The vice chairman, Christian Association of Nigeria, Northern Region, Reverend John Hayab, has now confirmed Zango re regained his freedom on Friday night. And he joins us now to bring us up to speed on that story. Thank you very much for joining us, Reverend. Thank you, too. And uh, you can see I'm smiling today. I'm smiling also. I remember when we have uh, had this uh, conversation yesterday, I was uh, filled with worry. And you also shared a lot of concerns um, con um, about the safety of uh, Reverend Polycarp. So quickly yeah. tell us, you know, how this played out, how he regained his freedom. What have the last few hours been like? Well, uh, we may not be in good position to tell exactly what happened at the moment. And uh, looking at the conditions surrounding the kidnap and then the release, we only accept to speak because we want to express gratitude to God, gratitude to Nigerians, gratitude to all of you for standing with us, for praying with us, for speaking out, and then our brother is back. Yesterday night when this news came out, and uh, someone was in the house and video his wife dancing, jumping, though he wasn't home at that time, and finally today he has returned home. All we could say is that to God be the glory. But what exactly transpired at the moment is not what we can say. Uh, we don't want to also preempt every other further investigation, but we want to just say, God, we thank you because this victim was not killed. This victim has returned home. At least our sorrow, our pains, our regret, our disappointment has turned to joy. So we just thank the Nigerians. We thank those who play a role to bring about his release. We thank those who prayed. If there's government involved, security is involved, we thank them. We don't know what to even mention it. We just thank everybody because our brother is back. Uh, this is a miracle, and we have every reason to celebrate and thank God for it. And uh, of course, uh, on your screen there for our viewers, as uh, the wife of uh, Reverend Polycarp, of course, rejoicing uh, after his uh, release. Um, uh, qu quickly also, can you share with us um, any details about um, his health? Um, was there any harm, you know, done to him? Is he, you know, in full health and, you know, healthy? Well, not to my knowledge, and nobody has actually confirmed that, but having stayed with them these nine, ten days, he needs to see a doctor, he needs to be examined, and then we can say something in the future, exactly what is his state of health. You know, sometimes when you are in this kind of excitement, this kind of joy, there are things you don't even remember to do them. You just want to first celebrate uh, the return of someone who you have started mourning, started feeling that he's not going to come back. I think that's majorly what is going on, but definitely he's going to see a doctor in the short time, uh, and then uh, other investigations will be taken. Uh, we still believe that we'll be talking with security agencies and even government to know more about this. But we are actually taking measures among ourselves that in the future, church leaders, Christian groups traveling must no longer travel in such a way that show that they are going for religious purpose. Since we have evil surrounding our community, we must be wise. The Bible teaches us to apply wisdom. Uh, it is not correct when we go out the way we go out these days. It is only going to be exposing us to danger and then give enemies the opportunity to ridicule us and cause us pains. All right. Is there any word from the... Was he kidnapped alone? Can you confirm if he was kidnapped alone or he was taken with other people? And if uh, with all the no, people... he was that... taken with three other women. Okay. Uh, but at the moment, I'm not... I don't think I have enough information about those women because the focus was about him and he is back. But we know by evening and tomorrow morning we will have details about those women. Uh, but because, you know, he's a pastor and the focus here is like a religious leader has been kicked out and he's in danger and we're just coming out of Andy's reality that his head was chopped off. We don't want something like that to happen to another pastor. And so the focus was on him, but uh, he was not given up alone. There were other women, they were going for religious activities and this unfortunate thing happened. But for now we are grateful because he's back. We hope that those women should be back too. If they are not, then we'll continue with their own struggles. 
And uh, hopefully uh, his return would also aid in um, investigations for, and uh, follow-up from security agencies uh, just in case uh, the others are still in captivity. Um, I, I want to you know, also quickly ask um, about what this does for the Christian community um, in the north. Is this a boost? Um, and what other things would you also advise for um, your fellow pastors and fellow, you know, reverends, you know, still working in northern Nigeria? Um, it must be really, really dangerous uh, a terrain uh, for them to be working. So what would your quick advice well, be uh, for them? What this has... Yeah, yeah. What I can say this has done to the church in northern Nigeria is that it has strengthened our faith in God. It has strengthened our courage to stand and continue to pray when we have difficulty. The experience of Peter in the Bible when he was in prison and miraculously he came out and even believers couldn't believe that he would come out is what we have experienced. So this is to show us that what we read and study about God, intervention in difficult situation is real. So if we have faith in God, if we trust in God, if we continue to stand with God, even in a difficult situation, God is going to deliver us. But as I said earlier, we have to also learn lessons that uh, looking at the terrain, the challenge we are facing, people should not be discouraged taking up ministries. People should not be discouraged going out there to witness or going out here to evangelize. People should not be discouraged going out there to serve the Lord, but we must apply wisdom. What kind of wisdom are we going to apply? It may not be good for me to say it on media. It's something we are going to discuss among our pastors and encourage one another on what to do. Reverend Hayab, uh, thank you very much for speaking with us. Uh, I know that you, of course, have to get back to um, uh, Reverend Polycarp Zango. Um, so extend our, our wishes to him, and we look forward to speaking with you again. Please stay safe. He will definitely hear this. And let me, on behalf of the Christian Association, thank you all media for taking up this matter. Apart from a few other newspapers that came up, your television actually was consigned and brought up this matter. We do appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you.